I'm starting today's video with the uh, bits that weren't recorded properly yesterday. Um, the first is showing you where um, Max Egan isn't alone in his endeavours, that he's not a one-man show. He definitely has assistance and, you know, bringing into the muso group, groupie mentality to tie it all together that basically any kind of celebrity has fans that will do stuff for nothing for them. So um, he just takes advantage of it. And even after his um, Crow House channel was on YouTube was closed down what, back in June sometime, he, he was saying about how he had all these people that had made him offers. He even came up with that sponsor. Now, does anyone remember that sponsor for, you know, only for a couple of weeks and then mysteriously vanished? He never said anything about, you know, he, he mentioned that he was going to try it out and see if it worked. And then he just stopped putting the uh, sponsor on at the beginning. Didn't have the link in the uh, videos. So what the sponsor didn't like what he was doing or uh, wanted to have too much control over it the fact that max hasn't actually said anything he was probably dropped by the sponsor otherwise he would state you know that it didn't work out because he actually said you know but then again he doesn't talk much about his problems other than being targeted and um, how at the moment he seems to be targeted seems like I'm not the only one and yeah I'll get into that a little bit on anyway because his video last night after I did the one yesterday I'm um, getting banned on pit shoot um, yeah I'll just get straight into this anyway so I'm just gonna bring you into where his assistant comes in but this is at the beginning, back in um, January, where he had his beam of light experience that was meant to flip his personality. And, um, you know, the earth is flat and, you know, hyperborea and all these other things. But the thing that he says too is that, um, I will get into his flip out in a lot of detail because there's a lot of things about what went on then that hasn't been questioned. Like, look at old Kev Baker over here. Oh, I feel so sorry for Max. Poor Max. I'm not going to ask him any hard questions like, no, you really have just flipped out and freaked out. And from what I've said in the past about um, this guy that I met in the community in northern New South Wales, how pretty much his programming had broken down and he had to go back in for reprogramming. And I kind of think that this is exactly what happened to Max in January. His programming broke down. And he even talks about how, you know, oh, all my life flashes before me. And I mean, the day before this beam of light, you know, he's, he's got all this adrenaline, like he said he'd been on coke or speed. And it's like, well, how do you know what it's like if you haven't been on it? And it's like, yeah, well, he's admitted he's had a pretty big drug history. So now he's told us coke, speed, mushies, um, DMT, um, yeah, which he whited on, out on, and people thought he had died. His ayahuasca 10-day retreat. And, yeah, his um, life as a muso where he became an alcoholic. Or maybe the mental breakdown he had after his wife left got him into the alcoholism I don't know but he's got a pretty big history of <laughs> abuse of his body and his mentality is certainly in question I mean where I paused it on here it was like yeah it's so kind of <laughs> the image that I have of him when he talks but I wanted you to have that image because what I explained is that because he is so tied up in the explaining of the experience and making sure that people are believing he's a targeted individual because he was making a difference and an impact with the fires and you know the government don't want him to speak out 
And so he's so focused on that that he's not focused on keeping the guards up like he usually does. So I'll let you just hear the finish of his... Oh, he always likes but, explaining. But I look at it and I just go, I had to do it. There was, I, I couldn't not do it. It was like it was the meaning of my life, like I would die or something if I didn't do this. I just, it, it had to be done. It had to be done by midnight and all this sort of stuff, like crazy thoughts, you know. So that's what I mean when I say I failed the test. I wasn't able to observe it. I wasn't able to face infinity without flinching. I let the adrenaline take over and, and it just did what it wanted with me. But it was a coordinated attack, like I said, because that adrenaline was building up from about probably 5 or 6 o'clock in the afternoon until I was hit with this, this whatever it was, at about 12.30 at night. But it was building up that whole way, like six or seven hours of this. And then I went through like you know, a couple of days of, of complete meltdowns and then five days of just babbling nonsense. So I'm really lucky that I had the friends that I had around. You can come in, Taylor. I'm really lucky that I had the friends around that I have and, and my young assistant Taylor who comes and helps me sometimes. I got her down from Brisbane. I literally talked at her for about 10 hours. Literally, like, I would, have, I would have spoken in a sentence that was like 10 hours long. And Taylor was just sitting in a chair just listening to me thinking, OK, I'm trying to process what you're saying, Max, but uh, crazy stuff. So uh, Max, I'm just lucky I had the you know, good... Good, good people around me. Yeah, the conversation we had, I mean, unbeknown to you. Oh, well, I'm going to stop that there because it had a very profound effect on Kev. You know, they're getting into the deep and meaningful of what he's gone through here. Uh, but you did hear how his uh, young assistant, Taylor, came in. Now, he said he talked at her one sentence pretty much for 10 hours. Who would put themselves through that? 10 hours of having like you either have to be paid for it or you have to um really be an adoring fan that you're going to take any flip out this this person comes out with but that wasn't my point i was trying to make yesterday at 44:57, taylor's come into the room and i'll just bring up the next section Okay, so we're at the one hour and seven minute mark and he's about to say something out of place here. So I believe in viruses. Um, you know, if you look at, I've spoken to a couple of doctors in England, like Dr. Graham Downing and a few people. They're very intelligent people. You know, viruses, I don't, I don't trust the concept of these things, you know. Daniel 7. And um, it... Uh, I just don't trust the concept of, of, of what they're saying. But anyway, you look at the... So, if we were playing Sesame Street right now, we'd know that he just turned his head sideways and said Daniel 7 to Taylor, who's been sitting there since she came in at 44 mark. And what has she been doing sitting there while he's been continuing to rant and rave and do his radio show? Um, she's been working on the other computer there, doing what all his assistants that come in and do, mix his videos, do all the work. So all he has to do is just sit there and repeat this same spiel that he's done over and over for so many years. I mean, seriously, if you took stuff from a video five, ten years ago, clipped it together with all these other bits and pieces, there's nothing new he's saying. The only person he's, he's changed his focus of attack. He did um, the poor Palestinians and cared more about what went on in other countries for most of his life. He was always on uh, press TV, you know, being the expert. They go to him in Brisbane to be the expert on what's going on in Gaza because he went there with Ken O'Keefe once. I mean, come on seriously and Ken O'Keefe well apparently O'Keefe's not even his real last name <laughs> it's not surprising Jordan Maxwell's last name is not his last name either so they've all got fake names and um, well I'm going to get myself sidetracked here so I want to stay and focus the video was out of um, whack before because uh, that was his stream on it um, now, so 
I've shown you that even though Max says he's a one-man show, he's got all these thousands of emails that he gets all the time from adoring fans that, you know, please ease back because I'm only one man and I've got all this stuff to do. Well, a lot of people have said it for a long time. He doesn't do this stuff himself. And all these radio shows, you know, he says it takes him a week to prepare the script that he reads for the radio show. I mean, seriously, all he'd need to do is copy and paste one from last week, wouldn't he? Or from last month? It's not like he's creating anything new. And for all the people that say, oh, but he woke me up. Yeah, so what? There's plenty of other people out there that have actually got exactly the same information and actually put it out better. You know, he's only narrating what others have already put together. You know, he's not an originator. He's a parrot. Anyway, um, the next thing was uh, that I missed out that we're going to get on to. I'll just bring that up. Now, this was the earlier email from the 12th of September that I omitted. Um, I don't know what happened in the video yesterday. I really don't. Maybe I pushed the wrong button or I didn't push it hard enough. I don't know. But it wasn't in there. So this is what I was referring to. This is the first lot where I actually um, went in and left that comment right there on his channels. I described how his channels got, both of them got yanked after that. And then um, I've highlighted here so that um, I'm not going to read through this because, um, as I've said, not all comments are for... Um, reading over um, you can read it yourself you know you can pause it and I've increased the font on it so hopefully it's easy for you to read after it gets processed and everything so so yes uh, it was confirmed right there that that does mean something and Yes, as I said, you don't get anywhere being adversarial. I mean, uh, be nice, you've got to be adversarial. And uh, I started off being nice because um, you get more bees with honey. I didn't think he'd, you know, if it did mean anything, if I was actually correct, uh, he should respond to that. But I want to put it in a manner that isn't adversarial to begin with. So, um, of course, it went to the spam. I didn't find it until days later. And I'd already done the video, so, you know, I told him that. And then there was just the back and forth. All the pale blue ones are Max's response to me. So, as I said, you can um, pause and read it so I don't have to, you know, spend the next whatever going through and reading it to you like you can't read it for yourself so that was the first coincidence that I was referring to that um, was it was a coincidence that you know within hours of asking that very first question what happened uh, his cha both his channels got pulled down then the the next thing that happened yesterday which we'll get further on to because um, yes so these two these three like I had the conversation on the 16th with Max and then the next day that's why I noted them here because it took Max sent them at 4 16 p.m. the day before and it took till 4 a.m. on the 17th so it took over, what, 12 hours to get to me. And by the time I got them, I thought, well, you know, they're pretty redundant. I'm not even going to say anything. So, um, but I thought, well, I'll just include them in there so you can see what he added on. I mean, uh, <laughs> I could say a lot about that, but and I have. I'll just bring up the current one and the current situation. So yes, again, I've highlighted Max in blue and 
you can pause and read it because um, yes I did get a little bit more um, prodding in this one <laughs> I mean ultimately you see you don't get anywhere if you don't put it out there uh, when I worked at Dun & Bradstreet in Melbourne they pretty much trained us to control the outcome before we even pick up the phone so to know what you want to achieve you need to know how to achieve it so I wasn't getting anywhere with the responses with Max so um, ultimately it's like alright let's put forward this little story and he actually does say you know interesting concept but you did notice um, you pause and read the previous responses that his response here to me is completely different now you've got to ask yourself that you see when people speak they speak not you've got to consider they know the truth of what they're saying or if they're trying to make you believe something else they still know the truth even though they're saying something else to make you not think it, th that truth some people actually give away the fact that they know they're covering something up by the way that they say something what they're not saying what they do say how they say it is all an indication of you know you're not specifically looking for these things what you're looking for is for your instinct to just go hey that doesn't sound right and for you to pay attention and then to ask that question of yourself why doesn't it make sense because you see Max Egan should have responded to me in a very very adversarial way calling me psychopath and all these other names but he didn't he's very passive why is he very passive because even though his words on here are trying to mislead me he knows the truth and he also knows that if he's aggressive the way that he normally is that that might not work out well for him so he's playing with me <laughs> I've got him to play with me so let's play along shall we so I'm just going to let you as I say you can pause and read that it went back and forth he said that um, you know he, he's got no involvement in it well which we know is absolute bullshit he's got every involvement in it in fact um, in the video that Max did last night after I did yesterday's video he actually talks about the guy that owns the house he puts the context of the other person that I apparently put in danger is only one guy and we know who that one guy is don't we that's the guy that sits on his front veranda just out the front of the crow house when Max interviews him on the nightcap on Minjimbul community yes we know him as Gunnambadi Jakamara or Mark McMurtry that's his little home away from home when he's not down giving grief to just out of Yukai at the um, Mount Warning community and you should look at the name as Mount Warning because anyone else calls it Wollumbin and an interesting thing about Yukai because I used to go into Yukai I used to actually walk into the shop pretty much on a regular daily basis and back out again Yukai um, is spelt U-K-I the UK actually stands for United Kingdom and the I is actually a one it goes back to the history back in the day I can't remember exactly what it's all about but I think it ties into land claims with logging or ownership or something like that as I said I'm not too sure but I just know that the name UK comes from UK one or I might have even have that slightly wrong it might be UK I for something else but the UK is definitely the United Kingdom it's tied back to who owns this country the Queen of the United Kingdom so um, 
Anyway, we won't get onto that uh, particular woman. We'll keep going on this guy. I'll just let you finish reading because um, after he pretended all of that, I just said, you know, there's the images. And he goes, oh, that guy. Yeah, I've seen his face. It's just like he says he doesn't know David Icke because he's only met him twice. You know what, I could talk to someone on the phone a thousand times and never meet them and still know them very, very well and be really good friends with them. And Max Egan uses his excuses when he says he doesn't know David Icke very well because he's only met him twice. That's He's saying he doesn't know someone because he hasn't met them face to face twice. He's talked to him a thousand times. And even in January when he had his meltdown, he rang up David Icke. Okay? So that's pretty close to be ringing him up and being on the phone and talking to him for an hour or so, you know, much like he was with Taylor. Uh, you got to be... I always was sus on David Icke long before I even knew who Max Egan was. But, you know, they're bringing out a certain amount of information, even though the other crap that they put in there is, you know, and the way they're presenting the message too, it's always a doom and gloom, you know. It's like, you know, it's like when I was a kid and mum used to drag me along to church. You'd sit there and this, this preacher's telling you that you're going to hell, you can only hope and pray that if you're a, the biggest saint on earth, you might not go to hell. And it's like, well... <laughs> If I'm damned from the first place, you know, why am I going to try? So, um, getting off subject again, sorry. Yes, I do hear myself saying it and I push the pause button. It's like, no, Kerry, hold yourself back and stay focused. Because um, I don't like to make these long and yak on. I try to get the point across without um, all my opinion in there. So um, I'll just pause it and bring up the next bit. All right, so as you can see that uh, Max Egan's friend, Ray, his BitChute channel, still hasn't um, unblocked my channel. They still have not responded. I've sent another email to them. Now, the interesting thing is that I was using a mail.com email address and I thought, well, maybe that... You know, I had problems with that in the first place. So I went and actually started up a Gmail account and I got on to BitChute straight away. So I don't know whether it's the difference between um, BitChute, uh, the email service. I don't know. But I'm still having issues getting um, the, the, vi the video processed and uploaded uh, on the one that I did get activated but anyway so um, Max's friends um, in at the office that uh, handle all these inquiries on the other account were answering me regularly and activated it manually because I set up two to see if there would be any difference and um, there has been so observing the differences in doing that and um, I still haven't received an email back after two days now. Well, today's the second day. So I know they're getting my email. They're just not answering it. And why aren't they answering it? Probably because, you know, the boss has overridden this account. It's a no-go. Don't even respond to it. Because what can I do? I mean, it's not like, watch this, contact us. It'll go through to nothing anyway because when you highlight it, see the address that it comes up to? I click on that to go to the appeal block and it won't bring up anything for me. It times out. It just won't let me go through to the appeal thing. So that's why I had to go through. Maybe I could um, try the alternate way but... Um, I mean, Max Egan's got all this controversial content on his channel. Of course, he's got no true confessions on there. So, um, yeah, 
very interesting, isn't it? Because uh, I did want Max Egan to upload a video and tell people that what he had been promoting and said, yeah, even in August, he's saying, I trust this project. It came out of his mouth and he's encouraging people to invest in it. This was in his one he did in August when they were out at the property with um, Gunham and AB, Adrian Brennock, and trying to discredit all the bad press that had been around it. Now, if you haven't seen that video, it's on Max's BitChute channel, which hasn't been blocked, and all his videos will never get pulled down, as I showed in the last one. But already the coincidences. My channel gets blocked the day after, well, not the day after, hours within that last email on the 30th to, to Max Egan. My channel on BitChute gets completely shut down. And this is Ray, who contacted he, the CEO from BitChute, who contacted Max. Hasn't even bothered to contact me, and even his lowly little plod workers can't even be bothered contacting me. But we'll move on to the clip that I did of Max Egan last night. Now, if it does get out of sync, I'm sorry, because I think that the further along I go in the screen record, the um, more it starts to lag out with the um, audio video sync. So I'll just pause and put it on. And the thing too, I think that you might find interesting to listen to is that what he does actually bring up in conversation that he doesn't ordinarily bring up and what he has done in the last couple of days, little contemplations and sidelines that he's added. But, you know, the only mention that he usually does of Bitchute is to say that, um, you know, this is where he's uploading to now. But listen to what he says in last night's video. Instead of telling people that he had trusted these people and trusted in the development and come on in and invest your money in it, and this was the third promo he did on it, instead of warning people and telling them it's all gone belly up, stop putting in requests, it's, and you know, you need to see the people involved if you've already invested money. You know, and I'm really sorry that I was wrong. He did not man up. But what he did do... Lots and lots and lots. A lot of effort to shut down the truth as well. A lot of censorship. Someone posted on my BitChute page that they'd actually taken the link from Twitter to get there. And Twitter had told them that it was a dangerous link. They probably shouldn't go there. Link to a video on BitChute. Dangerous link, folks. May cause harm to your computer. May cause harm to your brain by helping you think a little bit clearer, I suppose. That's their problem. And BitChute itself has actually been under a pretty major attack. I think we need to support BitChute at the moment, folks, because, yeah, it's been under a pretty major attack saying that it's a hotbed for terrorism and all sorts of rubbish, you know. I mean, because BitChute is uncensored, you can sort of upload whatever you want to it. Sometimes stuff gets through that's, you know, pretty extreme. You know, and the management does their best. The CEO does his best to remove it. You know, all the stuff that's illegal, stuff promoting, like, genuine terrorism, you know. Any, any like, you know, ultra-violent shit, I mean, you know, stuff that's just distasteful and bad. I mean, I don't agree with censorship, but, you know, there's some shit. You, I mean, you've got to draw the line somewhere. You don't want child porn or whatever being uploaded to your video server. But BitChute's been under a pretty major attack. There was a hit piece that was done on it recently saying it's a hotbed for terrorism and stuff. I actually get more than a passing mention in this uh, hit piece done on BitChute, which is interesting. Interesting that I'm attracting so much attention. But I guess because a lot of people are listening. 
You know, we're at a really important time in history, folks. We really are. And what's happening here is a major crime. What the governments are doing is a crime. It's a crime against humanity, a huge crime. That's what these doctors are saying, the 500 doctors in Germany, are saying that this is a crime. It's a crime against humanity. We've got politicians who are actually... Yeah, I'm going to stop that. I can understand why people, you know, want to interrupt and say things because there were so many things that he said during this. It's like, you know, oh, you hypocrite. You down, outright hypocrite. You don't believe in censorship and your mate Ray's doing everything to keep all the undesirables away. Yeah. Tell me, how undesirable is it that I speak out against Max Egan? Clearly for Bitchute, that is undesirable, isn't it? And isn't it a coincidence that he brings this up right after my channel gets shut down? I don't even know anyone that's got kicked off Bitchute before. Seriously, it's where everyone goes to that gets banned from it. You know, I even looked at maybe I should set up a Patreon today and then I, I looked and they said, you know, that you can start on light, that they get 5% five per, five of something and it, of what you make and it's like, yeah, but I don't want to make anything. I just put my stuff up there. But then you'd have to set up all that other, you know, tie into pay up or an account. So I thought, yeah, maybe I might look at doing that because who would have thought that YouTube would have been a safer place for me to actually upload to than it is safe to be on BitChute. And why isn't it not safe for me to be on BitChute? Because of this little garden gnome. So he's just bought up this whole long spiel about uh, BitChute. I wonder why BitChute was on his mind. Maybe he was talking to Ray yesterday after I sent him those emails and they closed down my channel and he thought he'd uh, mention it in his videos. And you see, this is why I mention things in videos is because it's something I've been looking at. So you need to look at that when other people mention it in videos, why they bring things up. Like why did Max even bring up the subject of guns? But, oh, yes, that was before the community fell through. Now the community's fall, fallen through. That's a little bit of a clip, um, the rest of this. Now, what I'm going to do is shut up and let you listen to how much more of it is there. Oh, okay, I might stop it in between. He does tell us later on here about setting up in alternative communities or alternatively, a.k.a. Nightcap on Minjimbal, where um, the guy that owns this place is in charge of. And in the previous video, you would have seen a little black car with a number plate with a guy leaning against it. That guy lives at this house as well and he owns it. And his car is quite often seen in the videos. It's not the one parked right next to the crow house. It's the one that's parked where the roller door is. Inside Max Egan's got an old V-dub and there's a roller door behind it. If you opened up that roller door, it goes straight out onto the, the street. And if you look, it did roll up that roller door, sometimes there'd be a little black car parked there. Coincidentally, the same one that is at the nightcap on Minjimbal at 322 Kyogle Road with Gunham. And Gunham's on the front porch, making himself very much at home. So um, I'll let you listen to a little bit more. He goes into another subject here. I, it was a 54 minute video. Acting he in a criminal and irresponsible so manner. You know, also, getting back to BitChute as well, the, uh, the attack that's happening with BitChute, and it was, in which I seem to feature prominently. I'll put a link to a PDF article below. You can go and read it for yourself. But uh, 
I was informed, I, I mentioned the other day that um, the LRB Y app has been removed from Google Play Store, and so you're not able to get that. But there's another site called F-Droid, where apparently you can get, still get apps that are, you know, it's like Google Play Store, but without the censorship. f Dash droid dot org. So uh, perhaps LRBY can put their app available on that site. And there's also an app you can get for BitChute, which is called BitSlide. So for people who ha are having trouble with BitChute, you know, I, I see reports of some people having trouble with things loading or whatever, or trouble with the comment section. I don't really know. I don't. I don't have much trouble with it at all. Um, there is BitSlide you can get for those people who use cell phones. You can get this app called BitSlide, and that might help you with any problems you're having with BitChute. That's just one thing anyway. I've got some notes here, so I'm trying to remember stuff to say. There's so much stuff to... Yeah, there's so much stuff that you've got to remember to make sure you put everybody down. Oh, look, there's those steps that he apparently fell down rather than he kicked his foot into something and he broke it. But I'm going to interrupt him here before... He's just going to go round into the birds. He also says that um, people ask him, he wonders why the wild peacocks come in. For the same reason the wild birds come in anywhere, you know, especially lorikeets and other birds. You throw food out for them. The table just off to the right here has always got bird shit on it because that's where he puts the feed for him to jump up and get it. So, but he goes on to say, oh, he doesn't do anything, you know, to um, encourage them. He does, actually. Oh, yes, and just behind that uh, car there to the right too, at the front of the shed, that's where you see that little car parked. And there are times when Max has walked up there there's one time he walked out onto the road, you could actually see the number plate, but it wasn't visually clear. Uh, it wasn't until um, on the uh, Nightcap on Minjimble webs website, there was a picture of Mark with that car. And uh, it was easily identifiable then. And so were other number plates and other people involved too. Interestingly enough that I did a rego search on the number plate on the car and the rego search will only bring back vehicles that are currently registered. So I wonder if that only drives around at the property or it actually travels between New South Wales and Queensland on public roads and it's not showing up as being registered. That would be interesting. But then another interesting thing too is that I found out in Queensland that um, I had moved and missed out on voting and I had a fine to um, pay that I didn't even know I had. Now, did you know that your driver's licence gets suspended if you have got any penalty that you have not paid or is defaulted on in that sense? So Max Egan has not registered to vote. He has been defaulted and his driver's licence would have been suspended because of it and he is not able to legally drive. So when he says he drives, is he driving with a valid licence? Just another one of those things to think about. But um, again, he brought up the fact before about BitChute and the problems that others are having but he never has any problems of course not he's a high priority customer you know he's buddies he's met the guy i mean how many of us meet the ceos of companies even know them well enough that they could actually ring them like with david ike i mean not that he's the well he's ceo of his own company and interestingly enough too I just randomly did a search on David Icke at the um, business and ATSIC and ABN registers and lo and behold he's just recently registered and I thought well I wonder if that was to set up in a pyramid scheme like the rest of them that are investing in the nightcap community. 
What a pity it's all belly up. But I am going to finish tying all those companies and individuals together and making sure that all these companies are pulled down. Just because I'm not going to be presenting more of that information doesn't mean that I'm, I've left it there. I will be following through, but I don't need to, to be doing more videos and repeating the same stuff over and over. And besides, the bulk of it now has to be left to professional investigators. They need to take the whole of the information and start sorting through it all. And it will take some time because there are quite a few different facets involved in it. Now, my main focus now is this Max Egan and how much he's had the ability to shut my channel down on BitChute. Yesterday, we had this conversation, Max and I, and that evening or that day, he actually does a video. This would have been after I've spoken to him. And he's talked about BitChute. He hasn't talked about, I'm sorry people, don't invest any money, it's all gone belly up. I was wrong to trust in these people. Back in August I said I trust them, but now in September it's all fallen through. Yeah. One thing I noticed too, he kept mentioning in the last so many videos about his new glasses and I noticed before they're tinted and I thought yes I need tinted glasses like that because I can't handle going outside with the glare but they cost too much money where are you getting the money for all these extras Max I wonder how many people it took to pay for those nice pair of glasses that you've got anyway I'll let Max talk some more here because he's I, as I said, I do cut it because um, there are points that I uh, want to bring up that are all associated with my channel getting shut down. And why is he talking about BitChute? Is it a coincidence? I mean, this is the third coincidence now. Come on. Talk about folks. Knock, knock. Um. <laughs> yeah. Let's listen to I've got a couple of websites I want to show you as well. I want to go inside and show you through a couple of websites. The Quantum Financial Service. And uh, check out what they're doing with this new currency. And like I said, tie it in with all the other legislation that's being enacted. And bear in mind that this... This pandemic is fake. It's a quantifiable fraud. Anything that they're doing... This, this pandemic is fake. It's a quantifiable fraud. Anything that they're doing... You know, sometimes when I watch this man, I just... Everything that comes out of his mouth, it's like, are you reading my thoughts about you? It's like... Um, the same with Vinnie Eastwood. And the way that these guys actually put down other people, how he ridicules people because they're not seeing things the same way as them. Sheep, asleep, idiots, fools. I mean, they just keep going on and on putting people down because they have not chosen to actually believe what is going on around them. You know, people have to understand that what we, what we understand as our reality is choice. If people don't choose to look at information, that does not make them a fool. It does not make them sheep. Yes, it's frustrating because there is so much that people look at, but you cannot make people look at that information. They do not want to experience that reality. And yet you're forcing that reality onto them by saying they're idiots by not looking at it. And this is where we've got to get back from the judgment that we have on other people because they're not holding the same views as us. Yes, I know I get smart ass with people that criticize me, but you know what? I defend myself. I don't expect others to stand up for me. And yes, I'm going to be honest. And yeah, 
now a lot of the time I will be a bit of a smart ass because you know what I could say it a lot worse but I'm going to try and say it in you know I'm trying to be nice get the hint you know I'm not on the same page you've come at me a little bit aggressively I'm not going to um, behave that way but I'm also not going to take you seriously because you're not on the same level of understanding that what I am and it's not a, a good or a bad thing it's not right or wrong it's just that that's my choice it's been my choice my whole life to be uh, a knowledge junkie basically to go out and learn as much as I can not only from the experiences of others but from my own experience and I suppose that's why I bring a lot of my own experience into things because this is a big part of who each and every one of us are, our own experience. And we can only take everything else out there in the world within the context of our own experience, not within others. Others can certainly say things that we go, wow, I didn't know other people had that happen to them or something like that and it can then give you a sense of validation and we all do need that self-confirmation because we do doubt it you know when you have so many people that doubt it even when you doubt yourself to hear someone else say these things it can make you go well hey you know I'm not alone and that's exactly it no none of us are alone we never have been and we never will be I could be in the middle of the bush on a dark night and never be alone and I'm not talking about the animals I could be anywhere that's not around other people and I am never alone there is always this presence I don't know how you would describe it in any terms that we have. Even what it is, I just know it's bloody well looked after my ass a lot of times. <laughs> but anyway, um, Mr. Depresso goes in here. He does a, a lot about, you know, more cryptocurrencies and banking. He tries to make a difference between cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin that you know one's real and one's not it's like oh mate none of them are real you know you're all buying cryptocurrencies in cyberspace and he's talking about the AI controlling the whole system grid and everything and you want to invest in cryptocurrencies that an AI system controls yeah smart max recommend people to do that you're telling them to get away from technology but go and invest in cryptocurrency that AI is controlling oh smart move but anyway I'm going to pause it and take it to the end of this because yeah I don't think you need to hear too much of what he's got here now he's just going to talk about the stranglehold that the media's got over things and it's like yeah there is a stranglehold over the media mainstream media and alternate stream media all of these people are controlling the narrative both in mainstream and alt media controlled narratives telling different narratives but they're playing both sides of the fence so that it looks like there's opposition controlled opposition and what better way to have controlled opposition than to have like your MK ultras that are programmed to be that opposition to be that fanatical character to be that sovereign right activist that goes into Pakistan and um, not Pakistan um, Palestine and Gaza and say that the government there is oppressive and wrong and criminals and then when you know he's been doing that for years and it seems like well they don't really want to hear from him too much anymore but 
just in the nick of time the bushfires come along and he starts doing stuff on that and now it's the government in Australia he can call criminals and and you know he starts focusing on that so everything that he's been saying ever since you know this 2020 has started has all just focused from being a corrupt government in Palestine to a corrupt government in Australia and to certain vigils that now, well, Danny and all his um, current people that he's focusing on to use to demonstrate his mindset and his sovereignty extremist personality. And he is an extremist personality. He does not have a very well balanced personality. And people that have listened to him narrate scripts on his radio show and documentaries, they've been deliberately done to make it sound like, at the very base level, this person has spirituality. Because it is like the intro level script for understanding spirituality. But the way he presents it, I mean, makes you more want to go out and, you know, hide give up than to think wow you know I'm this great powerful being that has been squashed into this mortal body that yeah one day I'm going to leave that behind and go on to somewhere else but while I'm here you know what I'm going to create and I'm going to do great stuff and you know being one person I have seen history even the history that we are given that we are told to believe and understand well in those histories one person many a time has made a difference and changed the course of history so never ever underestimate your power your singular power as one person and imagine if one person can change the world if you get together with a friend what two of you could do or more and ultimately, while Max Egan is keeping a certain number of people focused in this negative, there are a lot of people out there that aren't focused in that negative. They're building up this positive. They are not going to accept this reality or even create the reality that Max Egan keeps telling us we are doomed to have. You know, we've just got to accept it and take it. But he doesn't, he can't bug out anymore, can he? Because the nightcap community has gone belly up. And the land is not going to be, the two million isn't going to be forked over. And that again, we can confirm that Max Egan knows this because I will let you listen to the rest of it because he actually brings up this place and living here. So I'll let you finish listening to the rest of it. But the stranglehold yeah, that the media so has got over information, <laughs> the media just, just presents whatever story it wants. And people just buy into it. It's crazy, folks. It's crazy. So, you know, in this situation, you know, what do you do? The best thing you can do is, is spread information to as many people as you can and, you know, hunker down just so that you'll get through. Wherever you are, I mean, hunker down. I was talking about po the possibility of even leaving Australia on the last report that I did. But, I mean, you know, I really like living here in this shed. I've lived in this shed here for like six, seven years now. And I don't ever plan on moving. I've been told I can have it for the rest of my life. And this is where I intend to stay. But even if I did want to travel overseas, I mean, uh, I've thought about it, but... I don't think you can actually travel overseas at the moment. I don't think Australians can travel overseas. Perhaps foreigners can leave the country if there are foreigners in Australia. I think perhaps they can leave the country. I mean, if I look up flights online, you can find flights out of the country. You can book flights. But um, I don't think Australians are actually allowed to leave. I don't know. I mean, I only know what I've been told. I haven't really looked into it. Like, I haven't tried to buy a ticket or anything like that. I don't really know where I'd go. But, you know, when you look at everything that we're facing, 
It's hard to know what to do about it, folks, apart from spread information and hunker down, make sure you and your family is looked after. No, it's the fact that you've got to pay to be alive to begin with is the problem. The fact that people even believe they can own the earth, I've never been able to figure that out, how people believe they can own a part of the earth. I mean, sure, I mean, I can appreciate that, you know, I wouldn't be able to rent this shed that I live in if the guy who owns the property didn't own the property. He'd be renting it off someone else and they'd, you know, say, I mean, it wouldn't work. I mean, the, the system that's there, I mean, I'm finding my way through it the only way I can because we've all got to pay to be alive. It's just a prerequisite. But still, the whole, the whole concept of, of land ownership is a weird thing. It's a weird thing, but it's, it's the financial trap. It's the economic trap that is the problem. They probably get labelled as a rogue state or something by the rest of the world. If you get the whole country to go back to tribal law in Australia, you'd probably get Australia labelled as a rogue state. They'd say, oh, there's been some coup or whatever. The, the mainstream media, or mass media, would play whatever they want. Then you get the UN coming here and bombing the shit out of the place or something. I mean, you know. The same with these alternate communities. They can just say, oh, look, it's another Waco, and then go and napalm the whole lot of you. That's... that's the way they're setting it up and with the stranglehold the media has got over everything. Sorry, I have to interrupt that. So this community, this alt community, he's now saying could be like Waco where they come in and napalm you. Wow. That's a pretty big analogy, isn't it? Because that's just exactly what happened to his dreams of uh, going out there to his 2.75 acres, building his little house, drawing an income off all the businesses off it. It's just been napalmed, blown up, gone, disappeared. And yep. And why he's talking about this place that he's been told that he can always have it forever is because of what just happened. And Gunham has said to him, his landlord, don't worry, mate, you, this is yours forever. And why wouldn't it be? These two are like two little peas in a pod. You know, they're both sovereign extremists. And there is a lot in the Aboriginal community that actually don't like Gunham because of the movements that he's set up, like his um, OSTF one, is in opposition to a lot of real Aboriginals. And when I say real Aboriginals is because the ones that he represents are the ones that I've seen, you know, they're not real ones as far as I'm concerned because they're, they're city dwellers that go there to take advantage of the white fellas, get all they can, steal what they can and then drift off somewhere so nobody can find them and then keep doing this on a daily basis. They bring dishonour to their people just as we have people that bring dishonour to us, you know. But we wouldn't turn round and say that all the... The crooks and murderers in the world are, are good people and that we should protect them. And ultimately, this is where a lot of, um, you know, there are black deaths in custody and there are a larger number of them simply because there are a larger number of them committing crimes to be arrested for. You know, it's not like they're getting arrested for nothing. They try to make out they are, but it's not there is a pattern of behaviour that has been taught amongst the tribes, especially the ones that are passing themselves off to do with this nightcap community. They are not the real Aboriginals, the tribals, the real people that I wanted to meet, but I don't know how to meet those ones. You see them every now and again on other videos, but anyway, that's getting off track. He's just um, said, basically, he's talking about 
where he's living now and how he can stay here the rest of his life because of what he's not telling you and what he's not telling others that he could because the nightcap community has gone belly up and so is his dream and all he's got is that little shed now and Mark's probably saying to him oh look don't worry mate because an interesting thing I found out about Mark McMurtry, he was associated with ATSIC. Now, I actually know a little bit about ATSIC because I um, had dealings with them. And I know exactly the kind of problems that they had with them. And Mark McMurtry sued ATSIC for $33 million. Now, I can't find too much out about that because um, it seems that... That might have been part of a court proceedings where listings have to be gotten rid of Google as well, which Mark McMurtry likes to seem to be in charge of things to make sure that you can't access that information. So in knowing that, I'm actually going to start looking for court documentation that's associated with it that maybe might show, did he get a $33 million payout from ATSIC. And what did he do with that $33 million? Is it possible that I was right in the first place that the adjoining larger property, which also appears to have Malokas on it and associated with this one, might actually be a main house of some type? I don't know. I don't think so somehow. But... He could be renting it out to someone who's very rich and is paying a lot per month in rent. I don't know. It's really difficult to know left, what the solution uh, is. I mean, the solution is non-compliance, but it's non-compliance to the tech as well. You can find these memes everywhere. If you just search for COVID memes or even go to my website, there's a memes page. I haven't uh, added a lot to it. I have updated the website recently. I've changed the headlines and I've done a few things. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get back onto the website folks it's been difficult i've been trying to get through the emails so they're kind of red pilling the whole world in this way and the fact that there's so many hit pieces being done against places like bitshoot hit pieces against me huge campaigns against me at the moment crazy stuff but that's the way it goes folks that's when you know you're making a difference so you've got to be encouraged by the fact that you know they're so reckless and so haphazard in what they're doing they're really going fast trying to roll this out because they're totally losing the information war. Too many people are getting the picture, too many people are waking up, and so they've got to push it out as quick as they can. And in, in a way that's... Too many people are getting the picture, too many people are waking up, and so they've got to push it out as quick as they can. And in, in a way that's... Yeah, this is about to end anyway. But you heard him say it for yourself. There's a few hit pieces out on him. And is that what he considers what I'm doing, a hit piece? And that that's what he's got to expect because he's trying to tell the truth? Actually, I think Max Egan, who it isn't his real name, is trying to conceal the truth. The more someone talks to you about, I'm telling you the truth, <laughs> the less likely they are to actually be saying something that's truthful. You know, and like the way he opens his eyes up wide too, as if, yeah, trust me. It's like when people do that, uh, that's a little bit of a red flag for me as well because it's the, the wide-eyed you know, I'm opening my eyes up wide, I'm opening up, you're supposed to trust me. It's a subliminal thing that you're supposed to pick up on because it's that, you know, openness. Anyway, I'm just going to pause and bring up something else. Uh, the last place I'm going is um, this video. Uh, PDF. Yes, I've had some interesting things happen with my computer as well, but you know, my computer and I have had a very good relationship for quite a few years now, so uh, yeah, it's just like my car, she, she went for a long, long time too, and even after this guy blew it up on me, 
she still made it all the way from Yukai to um, Nimbin Rocks and um, yeah he didn't expect me to show up after he'd blown my car up and <laughs> made sure that I had nowhere to that way I could move out of this place that they got kicked out of because they didn't feel they should have to pay any rent yeah so that's other people for you but uh, this is Max Egan for you he is mentioned a couple of times in here funnily enough with um, David Icke and so it looks like I'm going to be looking at the David Icke and um, Max Egan connection a little bit more deeply too because I'm still curious as to how in 2011 that Max Egan gets invited to spend four days with um, David Icke at Ayers Rock and go through sacred ceremony there. Now that's one of the two times that Max Egan says he's met him. But before he actually met him, he's spoken to him heaps of times. Because the next time he meets him is the next year. And he is in England for the first time and he's staying at Ken O'Keefe's place who he's never met before. And when he said that, I'm thinking, what do you mean you went to someone's place that you never met? And then I thought, ah, I know what you're talking about. That's your definition. When you say you've never met them before, you mean face to face. It doesn't mean that you haven't had a thousand conversations with them and you don't already know them. Right. Because that would make sense then of why he would then go to a guy's place that he'd never met before and stay with him. Yeah, that he stayed with Ken O'Keefe in the UK where he then hooked up with David Icke who was doing a lecture on the Isle of Wight. So Max Egan had actually gone to the UK because of David Icke and he was staying at Ken O'Keefe's place who he'd never met before. Now I don't know about you but that kind of situation is either David Icke knows someone and says look I've got this person coming over can you give them accommodation and they've said yeah sure or Max Egan already knows Ken O'Keefe and he knows he's near where David Icke is and says um, do you want to visit a mate and he goes yeah sure so that would explain why he says that was the first time he met him and how that would actually be a truth and this is why I'm telling you this is because you do need to actually look at a little bit deeper as to why people are saying things and what they actually mean like he he did that video after the Zen Gardener and Ken O'Keefe thing and he did that thing where he said about David Icke because people said he was thick as thieves with him and he said, I've only met him twice. Yeah, thick as thieves. And it's like, met him twice? You've had him on your radio show. You've been on with him. You've talked on the phone to him. When you had your meltdown and only your friends were getting involved, you talked to Vinnie Eastwood, you talked to Kev Baker, you talked to Richie Allen, you talked to David Icke. These are all your friends. So yes, it would stand a reason. And all of these people came out in defense of him too. Instead of questioning someone that's got a history of alcohol and drug abuse, questioning their sanity, they prop him up as being a targeted individual. Now I'm gonna leave it at that for today and say, um, <laughs> Say goodbye until next time. <laughs> Bye.